Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week, we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and we create a theme burger based on the episode. Today, we're talking about Season 2, Episode 4, Burger Boss. It was written by Scott Jacobson, directed by Jennifer Coyle, and aired April 1st, 2012. The store next door this week was A Fridge Too Far, Used Appliances. The exterminator van was Chester the Depester. (laughs) Kind of cute, I guess, yeah. And we had several burgers of the day uh, this week. We had Papaya was a Rolling Stone burger. Probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. Good Night and Good Leak burger. And Band on the Bun burger, which comes with wings. Which is weird to me. I mean, it's like Man on the Run. Yeah. But. The song was written by a band called Wings. Right. That's the joke. That's clever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I like mm-hmm. that. I found a little bit of trivia for this episode. So Linda reads several books in this. She does. Yeah. Every book. I love the title of it. Oh, fantastic. She reads The Seaman's Wife, All Hands on Rick, Ahoy Mating, and The Sensuous Swabby. (laughs) Wow. The writers in this show just have so much fun. I love it. It's just all pirate themed. You know, it works perfectly with her delusion in this episode, so... Super erotic titles. So erotic. All hands on Rick. I feel like that needs to be the title of a Rick and Morty episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another little point is that Burger Boss is a play on the old arcade game, Burger Time. It looks very similar, like Mm. the artwork. And also a fan made a real Burger Boss game that you can actually go and play. I will put that link in the show notes, just if you want to go try it out. That's awesome. Maybe we can beat Bob's high score. Well, it's really Jimmy Pesto's high score that we need to beat, obviously. No, I'm okay with just beating Bob. Okay. (laughs) His high score's not that high. That's really true, yeah. All right, so let's get started. Bob is showing off the new Burger Boss arcade game for his restaurant, hoping it'll bring in more customers. Jimmy Pesto comes in and beats Bob's high score and writes Bob Sucks as his name. Bob plays all night determined to beat Jimmy's high score. Super mature of Jimmy Pesto. Mm-hmm. We get started really quickly in this episode, which is nice. We get the ball rolling. Um, I like Louise's reaction to Bob when uh, he's telling her how great he was at these kind of games. She's like, we would not have been friends. And poor deluded Bob says, I'm sure we would. No, we totally would have. No, Louise would have kicked your ass in the next week. Can I say that on this We podcast? haven't said that. Okay, well, she would have kicked your butt into next week. <laughs> and I think that the arcade game is actually a really good idea. Yeah, it's a great for idea. For the restaurant. Yeah, I used to go to a restaurant that had a bunch of arcade games, and it was perfect for me as a kid, mm-hmm. because I could go over and play while my parents were waiting to order, and they could have a little bit of time to themselves. Like, I think this actually would bring in business if he wasn't constantly on it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Bob's the only... A... Go ahead. Bob's a big self-sabotager. He's buying these things for himself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, though. I no. don't know. If it hadn't gone this way, I feel like it could have just actually been helpful. The only thing is, from what we know about Bob, is he doesn't really like kids a whole lot. Not kids that aren't his, no. Yeah, so <laughs> this arcade game is going to bring in a bunch of kids... And he's going to get super frustrated. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he hates kids, but definitely not the biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm remembering the ice cream from an earlier episode. Yeah. Swirl it. Swirl it. Oh, God. Swirl it. Yeah. He'd probably have kids asking him for change all the time. And yeah, there's a potential problem there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. What do you think of Jimmy Pesto's gaming style? Uncomfortable. That oh was my god. <laughs> so uncomfortable. Ooh. The kids watching it and Bob's just like, my kids are here, Jimmy. Could you not have like pseudo sex with the arcade game? That yeah. would be great. Stop molesting Super awkward. 
Um, I do love the little cut to Bob and Jimmy when Linda's talking about uh, their their peeing race, mm-hmm. and you. See them making the metaphor very literal by spraying their hoses at each it's other. It's like a literal peeing competition. I know. I love it's it. Great. It's so, it's just so literal that mm-hmm. it makes me laugh every single time I watch it. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty great. <laughs> and of course, Bob ends up on the losing side, as he always does. Hmm. Except for that one time when no one was around. Okay, but he made the bad move of spraying upwards... Oh, Bob. Right above himself. Like, come on, oh, Bob. Bob. You're better than that. Mm-hmm. Or at he least was I caught would... up in the okay. in the thrill of this peeing competition, <laughs> this peeing race. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, how did you feel about the passage of time in this episode? Like, did you get an idea of how long things lasted? Like, how many days were going by? I didn't really think about it. Hmm. It just... Seemed to progress naturally. Okay. I started noticing when I was watching it that there wasn't obvious cuts of of days. Mm-hmm. So I started wondering, well, how long has Bob been trying to beat this high score? How many nights has he stayed up, you know, not helping Linda in the restaurant, not doing anything other than playing the game? Mm-hmm. And I felt like it kind of, it was kind of nice in a way because it sort of, puts us into Bob's shoes because he's experiencing, like, a disassociation when he's playing the game. Just like anybody does when they're reading something or watching something that's really... Engrossing. En- yeah. Yeah, really engaging. And you don't notice the passage of time, right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how it felt to me. And after I was a little bit frustrated, like, wondering, okay, well, how long has this been? I thought that that was actually a really neat... Hmm. way to move time in this episode yeah it's interesting to think about Mm -hmm. it happens to me when i'm playing video games hours can pass in like the blink of an eye i don't realize i've been playing something (laughs) for like five hours Mm -hmm. it's just that's gone those five hours are just gone so quickly that says a lot about the game Mm mm-hmm there's a difference between sitting down and enjoying a game for five hours or just constantly trying to beat the same thing over and over and over again for five hours. That just gets frustrating to a point where you mm-hmm. can't stop because you've already invested all this time and you're just so mad. Jason speaks with experience, as I'm sure you can tell. No. <laughs> no. Never. 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 No. See, if I get to that point and I'm just trying to do the exact same thing over and over again, if I've done it maybe 10 times, then I have to walk away because I'm so angry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If anyone has played The Last of Us on any mode other than easy, but even for easy, this was hard for me. Uh, When you're hung upside down and you're trying to shoot all those zombies, no thank you. No. That took forever for me to get on the first try. Oh, Anyway, (laughs) we'll move on. Bob's obsession causes him to get carpal tunnel syndrome, but he continues to play Burger Boss. Linda gets rid of the game to help her husband, but Bob tracks it down at family fun time. Bob needs the kids to go to the arcade, so he lies to Linda, telling her they're taking sailing lessons. She's so gullible. So gullible in that moment. Oh, goodness. It's almost like episode one. Mm-hmm. When Bob is saying, no, I really forgot your birthday. When Bob is saying, no, I really forgot our anniversary. I didn't plan anything big. Yeah. And Linda's saying, oh, you did. I can see that you got a smile. <laughs> I'll have to practice my surprise face. <laughs> yeah. No, no. She just wants to believe something so much. Yeah. It's just there's no way that Bob would have any interest in doing that. So... She's just delusional. She's very invested in her novels at the moment. Mm -hmm. So she's imagining that her husband is like those other (laughs) seamen. Yeah. I do like that she points out that whenever Bob lies, his eyes cross a little. And uh, I think that that's a really, really funny tell. And I used to have a screenshot 
of the cross-eyed Bob as my computer background for months because his <laughs> face is so perfect. It is so good. <laughs> And he's just insisting, no, it's fine, it's fine. I, he told me I have to keep playing the game. Okay, I'm going to shut my eyes now so you can't can't see me. <laughs> I really wish they'd kept that going. Yes, that's yeah. something that it would be great if they brought up every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Or even in this episode when he's kind of, you know, saying all this bull about taking sailing lessons. Mm-hmm. It would have been kind of funny if... From behind Linda, we see Bob and his eyes are a little bit crossed. <laughs> yeah. Like, we know he's lying. We don't need that tell to figure it out. It just would have been funny that that's a consistent tell yeah, of his. Exactly. Yeah. One thing I noticed, the arcade in the town doesn't have a punny name. And no. I was a, it was a little different. Yeah. Because most of the stores in this town have punny names. Yeah, they do. There's a few that don't, like Reflections, but yeah, I thought maybe they could have a play on arcade games or Mm -hmm. Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. Yeah, Family Fun Time's pretty boring. Mm -hmm. Can you think of something you would have called it? No. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that was just the writers. They were like, "Mm, nah. We came up with a lot of burger names this week. We can't do anything else. And book names... True, true. A lot of... We're kind of burnt out right yeah. now, so family fun time. Do you feel like it's a little weird that there are no adults allowed without children? Very weird. I thought it was weird, but I guess it sort of makes sense if you think about this as a Chuck E. Cheese type of place. Right. Okay, you're right. I was thinking of it more as an arcade, mm-hmm. but with a Chuck E. Cheese environment. Yeah. It would be weird to have like a 40-year-old man by himself. At a Chuck E. Cheese, but it wouldn't be weird for that to happen in an arcade. Right. And especially the way that they're doing a lot of arcades nowadays, where it's meant for adults, Mm -hmm. mostly. Like the nostalgia. They're aiming for the nostalgia factor. Yeah, exactly. And they serve alcohol, and there's that kind of vibe to Mm -hmm. it. Um, That was my first thought. Like, you guys could be cashing in on all this nostalgia. Yeah. You know? And... If you served alcohol, but then I thought, oh, yeah. If you're trying to really market this to kids in a kid-friendly environment, you're not going to want lonely 40-year-old men hanging around. Mm -hmm. You just don't. I do really like Bob's attempts to get in, where he says, well, I forgot, I'm a cop, let me in. And he just kind of (laughs) grabs his wallet, claps it shut super quickly. I've seen that happen in a few different shows, and it always makes me laugh. It's Mm. just... It's such a bad move, but you have to try it, I guess. Especially after failing to get in, then busting it out. If you don't lead with that, then no. No, no, not going to happen. I like that we give the kids something to do in this episode as well. That they're not just playing arcade games beside Bob, and they're not just pestering Bob. Like, they actually have their own story and their own objective, I guess, in this episode. Like, to have fun, and they keep... Crashing all these parties. It's cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They feel kind of strung along to me. Oh, yeah. And it makes sense because they are. Bob drags them around because mm-hmm. he has to. It's the only way for him to get into the arcade. And they don't really feel like they know what to do. So they look for stuff to do. I wasn't a huge fan because they don't really do a whole lot. It just feels tacked on. Right. Like the writers are like, okay, we have them in the arcade. Now we have to have them do something. Yeah, but I guess I like... What I'm trying to say is that I like what they got them to do. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Because they really could have just had them hang around. Mm-hmm. But instead, having Louise be kind of this grifter, you know, and uh, and the other two just following along and having their little moments with all these different birthday parties is, mm-hmm. is sweet. Yeah. yeah. Adds for like a nice little background story. Yeah, I agree. All right, so we'll move forward. Bob meets a kid named Daryl who can help him beat Jimmy's high score in exchange for intimidating his bully. We see a montage of Bob and the kids playing at family fun time. The kids get bored of birthday parties and crash a yacht club party. Bob takes too many pain pills and hallucinates Daryl's bully as a giant chicken leg from Burger Boss. He chases the bully out of the arcade and into the yacht club. Linda is called to come pick up her family. Well, this episode took a little bit of a turn there. It escalated pretty quickly. Yeah, it really did. It went from Bob trying to beat a high score to, oh no, popping pills, Bob, 
addicted to pain pills. I think part of it, (laughs) I don't think it's, I think it's one of those things where it's everything put together, right? Like he's stressed out and frustrated, so he's not getting a lot of sleep. And then because he's not getting a lot of sleep, he's, uh, he's feeling a little bit like already kind of off. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he's taking these pain pills, and that's making it worse. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just compounding. Yeah. Right? And the montage shows us the kids going to 10 different birthday parties. So if we are to assume that there's only one birthday party per visit to the arcade, then they've been keeping up this charade for a little while. At least, like, a week. Well, a couple weeks. Yeah. Right? So, So this isn't... Super quick escalation? No, but in the episode. Mm -hmm. In the episode itself, yes. What did you think of Daryl? This is our first appearance of Daryl. We will see him again. No, we didn't mention the voice actor, but Daryl is voiced by Aziz Ansari. Mm -hmm. And we saw him in New York. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) I got really excited. Um, (laughs) Jason and I took a trip to New York a couple years ago, and we went to a comedy club just for fun and he was a surprise guest comic yeah. for the evening so that was a lot of fun he just showed very up very excited which is cool mm-hmm. and he was hilarious so <laughs> it, was, it was excellent it was a great evening and he will return in bob's burgers for as daryl many times Mm-hmm. i like daryl this introduction confused me a little because he's a classmate to tina and i feel like we've met most of her classmates at this point yeah, it's possible. He could have changed schools. Mm-hmm. Could be a new kid. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll buy it. And but... it's also, it's just season two. So mm-hmm. plenty of space to introduce new characters. Yes. He feels pretty weak in this episode. Of course, because he's trying to get Bob to intimidate his bully. And he's really very focused on that. And it seems very silly for a child to ask an adult to deal with, like, another child bully. For me, I guess it makes sense in in terms of, oh, can you get him to stop being mean to me? Mm -hmm. But asking Bob to beat him up? Yeah, like, take care of him for me. It's like, you're asking a random 40-year-old man to beat up, what, a 13-year-old boy? (laughs) Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. Probably. Don't do that. Yeah, you'd probably get arrested for that. Yes, definitely arrested. At this point, I don't think Bob really cared because I don't think he had any intention of going through it. Oh, no. No, definitely not. He was like, uh, sure, sure, sure. Okay, help me with the game, though? Yeah. (laughs) And I don't like that Daryl backed up Jimmy's creepy video game molestation because he's like, well, you really need to press your wiener against the game, which, of course, makes me want to stand further away from all arcade games later in life. <laughs> it's about the posture. Nope. It's all about it's the creepy. posture. You gotta stand up straight, thrust your pelvis, arch your back so you get a good distance away from the monitor. Oh yeah, it's nothing sexual. It's all about posture. It's creepy. <laughs> it's creepy and it's I weird. didn't convince you. Huh? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Doing well. the gestures did not help. Mm. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Okay, I haven't watched this movie in... ever, <laughs> but would you agree that Bob ends up looking like the villain from Karate Kid with the ripped sleeves and the little bandana on his head? Sure. Yeah? I, I feel guess. like that's what they were going for in this episode. The appearance and not quite the content. Yes, yes, the appearance, definitely. Sure. Or any generic kung fu karate movie. Yeah, I guess maybe he actually looks like a kung fu video game character. Maybe more of Street Fighter. Maybe Ken or Ryu or Ryu. I probably okay, just yeah, like yeah, made yeah, yeah. Street Fighter. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Bob just seems like that's the look they're going for in this episode. Yeah, and I really did. I did like that we insert the eight bit uh, video game and the sound effects into mm-hmm. the chase scene. It's it's really yeah, well done. It is. Yeah. And it's not over the top. We didn't change the entire look of the show. It was always through Bob's eyes. So it was perfect. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the yacht club? Jason, would you want to be part of a yacht club? Fancy. Mm. Sure. I'd feel like a wolf in sheep's clothing. 
Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, I do not belong here. Like I feel like when I'm in church. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I don't belong here. Everyone's looking at me. No this one... is awkward. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm not blending in. Seeing Linda dress up so she can... Blend in. Blend in, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the yacht club was... Oh, it's like what a non-rich person thinks that you should dress like. Oh, I thought she fit in pretty well. <laughs> Maybe that just that goes just, to show that, just shows that I would you. not fit mm-hmm. in. Because yeah. I'd be like, yeah, sure, that looks like a normal yacht club outfit. Why wouldn't you have... Wait, they're not oars. What are her earrings? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like the wheels of uh, a ship, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I knew they weren't oars. I was just... That was the immediate word that came into my mind. I was like, no, 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 Vivian, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. That is very wrong. Although, oar earrings could totally work. Just like dangly oars. Yeah, or like super long danglies. Well, maybe not super long, but yeah. Well, if they were like actual oars. Not actual ones. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> You're taking like ear stretching to a whole new level. That's true. Mm-hmm. Ow. I do like her little vision of, I don't know, her dream or her future as she's hoping it will go. And I like that her boat is called the All Right. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly that's what she would name it. And I like that Jimmy Pesto gets his comeuppance at the end of the episode. Kind of. Anyway. Yeah, he does. Off of some random comment. Yes, but I like that because then the the yacht club owner, board member, whatever he is, he's so appalled at the mm-hmm. idea of like peeing races. He's like peeing races. <gasps> Oh, no, that simply won't do. He's a deviant. Mm-hmm. This sounds, <laughs> very dramatic. This sounds wrong. We can't <laughs> let somebody like that in our club. Yeah, that sounds sexual and definitely not acceptable. Mm-mm. It's, so they're all it's, prudes. It's a great too. reaction, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. They pretend like they are. They're some freaky people. There's some freaky people out there. Now, we've got a yacht club in our town. We do. And we've been there a few times. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of old people. <laughs> yeah, rich old people. Rich old people. Because our town is right on the edge of Lake Ontario. Mm-hmm. So vast open waters, perfect for yacht clubbing. Sailing in general, Sailing, really, yeah. boating. Yeah. Dingying. See, I like being on boats, but I like being on fast boats. Hmm. So sailing just seems like, oh, man, Boring. we're just taking a long time to do this. Yeah. Right? When are we going to get there? <laughs> like, we're not going anywhere. We're just, we are there. We're I, boating. I feel like Ugh. if I was on a yacht, I'd just want to say all this weird yacht boat stuff. I'd be like, hoist the mainsails. And like Linda says. Jimmy the whatever. And <laughs> something, something, the jib. I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. I just throw out words just to be annoying. <laughs> so exactly like Linda. <laughs> yeah. Except Linda would try to pass it off as I know what I'm doing. I would just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. But and I think words. it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. <laughs> Basically, I'm telling you, don't ever take me sailing because I'm going to be That's really okay. annoying. okay. I don't think I could ever buy a yacht. <laughs> no, but you know, renting. Canoe. How's a canoe? <laughs> okay. A canoe sounds There's good. no sail. It's easy. Yeah, exactly. I won't say hoist anything. I'll just... Talk about ore earrings for a long time. <laughs> Back to the episode. Yeah. So while the whole climax is happening and Linda's getting mad at everybody in the family, and mm-hmm. I just love watching Bob in the background underneath the pool table, just jabbing with the, the oar, just mm-hmm. get away, get away the whole time. I wasn't even paying attention to what anything anybody was saying. I was just watching Bob. I didn't really like that, actually. No? No. Just because... It was already far enough that he had chased somebody into the yacht club, but then Mm -hmm. to have him hiding under a pool table trying to get everyone to get away from him just seemed more like mental breakdown, you know? And Mm -hmm. then if I was Linda, I would be very concerned about him Mm. and less concerned about my image, (laughs) you know? And, And not being part of the yacht club, right? But as a cartoon... Yes, yes. It's a little different. That's true. It's obviously not supposed to be portrayed that way yeah (laughs) yeah he does sober up in this episode yeah though so we uh we can talk a little bit about that after bob sobers up he apologizes to linda for his behavior daryl comes into the restaurant later saying he learned from bob to let go of his feud with his bully so bob inadvertently 
taught Daryl a lesson. Mm -hmm. An important lesson of just, you know, letting things go. Don't grow up to be like me. Yeah, because, you know, I'm 60 and I'm still (laughs) fighting with someone, right? Poor Bob. Poor Bob. They always think he's older. I really feel like the show doesn't make him as unattractive as everybody treats him. Because I don't think Bob, like, looking at him objectively on the show, I don't think he's unattractive. I think, yeah, he's definitely got some weight on him, and he is balding at the back, but that doesn't make you unattractive. Right. Right? He seems to have a good face going. He's got the great mustache, you know? He's a hairy guy. Yeah. He's a little moist when he kisses. Okay, these are like little facts, you know? And he seemed to get better at kissing by the end of that one episode. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's not that moist anymore. Yeah. Yeah, he's hairy, but it doesn't seem to be unruly. No? You know? So when I look at him, I'm like, you seem okay. Like, you seem like a regular looking kind of guy. But he's everyone treats him. with his wife. And... Yeah. But everyone treats him like he's this disgusting slob. More akin to the way people treat Homer Simpson, I think. Mm-hmm. And he's definitely not Homer Simpson. No. Of course, now all I can picture is Homer Simpson and that moo-moo. <laughs> when he wanted to be on disability. Anyway, yep. I like Tina's suggestion of Hi Bob as the new high, high score. score because it can be read two different ways. It's very subtle. As just Hi, Hi Dad, like Hello. Yeah. And then, of course, as Super Hi Dad. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Blitzed on pain meds. Yep. And this is the only time that the end credits are an 8-bit version with a sped up uh, theme song. Hmm. Yeah. And actually, several people have made cross-stitch patterns from this ending because cross-stitch is perfect for 8-bit characters. Yeah, it's essentially pixel-based art. Art, yeah. Yeah, pixel-based fabric art, Mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of fun. It's the only time we see that. Uh, they do change up the end credits on us pretty much every episode, but mm-hmm. it's this is the biggest change, I think. So using tunes like that, like the 8-bit style, mm-hmm. there's a lot of artists out there currently that make music in that style, and it's it's mostly known as chiptune. Oh. It's a lot of fun. Yeah? There's some really great chiptune artists out there, and it's really nice to see Bob's Burgers doing something like that. Hmm. Yeah. You That's should great. link us to a few of those artists I in the definitely show do notes. That. Okay. All right, Jason. So shall we get to our burgers this week? Sure. All I had right. a difficult time with these burgers. I actually had a pretty easy time, which okay. was nice. Maybe, <laughs> it's a yeah. little bit of a reversal from last week when I was having a hard time. So before we get into our burgers of the week, I thought that we could reveal some of the burger names we came up for a couple of our iTunes reviewers. Mm, so we've got exciting. Yeah, we've gotten some reviews on iTunes. Thank you so much to everyone who has left one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we've got a bunch of them, so we're just gonna do a couple, I think, each week, and just sort of not blurt them all out all at once, you know? Yeah, so if you don't hear your name, we'll get you next time. Mm-hmm. All right, so this week I came up with... Hold on. We're going to be very superficial about these names. Like, we're basically making them based on your username that you left a review on. So that's where these names are coming from. Yes. (laughs) And if you're somebody that we know from Twitter or, in certain cases, real life, um, then I can have a little bit more information and I will use that to try and think of a better name. For you. So our first burger is Ali's Illusion Burger. Uh, subtitle, it's not a trick, it's an illusion. <laughs> and this would be a vegan burger. So the idea is that it looks like a real burger. Uh, I was thinking that the patty would just wouldn't be there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. So just like a bun and lettuce and stuff? It's an illusion. This burger doesn't really exist. <laughs> no, no, no. It's an illusion of a hamburger because mm-hmm. it's a vegan burger. Yeah. You know? No. But, I like it. Uh, yeah. So, I, Ali, I hope you like that. I thought it was silly. I know you're watching Arrested Development right now. So, I figured you'd appreciate it. The other burger is for a reviewer called Harlem Silo. 
and we came up with the Harlem Shake and Bake Burger. Nice. Yeah. And Except if you hate the Harlem Shake. But okay. That's okay. I'm sorry if you hate the Harlem Shake. I know it's dumb. But I think it would be fantastic if every time you ordered this burger, the waiter had to do them oh Harlem Shake gosh. afterwards. Because you, Can you imagine someone who's completely dispassionate trying to do the Harlem Shake? Oh, no. <laughs> it would be pretty great. It should also come with a milkshake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I like that. It's a good addition. My contribution. <laughs> so thank you so much for leaving those reviews. We'll get a couple next week as well. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get to the burgers of this week for our Burger Boss episode. All right. Shall I go first? Sure. So my first burger is the four cruller eight bit burger. So it would have crullers as buns. Very sweet. Mm, yes. Yes. I looked it up to see if anyone does this kind of burger and they super do. Of because course. apparently rule 34 of burgers, right? Right. Similar to last week, my churro mm-hmm. bun. Yeah, very similar. Mm-hmm. Riding on my... My victory wave, I see. Uh, I was just trying to think of something that worked with color. Yeah. We yeah. actually had a a store in Kingston, a store in our town called Four Color 8-Bit. Yes. So. Yeah. Video games and comics, comics and... all kind of fun stuff. So my first burger is <laughs> called Too Mush of a Gouda Thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a mushroom and Gouda cheese burger. That's kind of cute. And it's because of the kids getting overwhelmed with all these birthday parties and not really right. enjoying it because they're getting too much of the same thing over and over and over again. That's true. If every night's a party, then parties just suck. Yeah. After a while. So, too much of a Gouda thing. It's cute because it also sounds like something Super Mario would have said. Well, Mario from Super Mario. Why? Because he's Italian? Hey, Luigi! That's too much of a good thing! You know? It sounds like something you might have said. If only you guys could see what Vivian was doing. <laughs> She's doing like a running man thing. And I just did that's it too. That's what he looks like. That's true. In the game. That is what he looks like. He's always running. Um, or and jumping. Then, that, yeah, and that's what he looks like when he's jumping. And... They anyway. still can't see us. No, they can't. And I'm still doing it. I'm sorry. I'm not good at this. Not visual medium thing. Um, <laughs> okay. So burger number two. My second burger is the any mess burger. Like NES. Uh, it's a hot mess burger with Thousand Islands dressing, cheese, lots of bacon, iceberg lettuce, and sweet potato fries on the burger. A hot mess burger? Yeah, it's just like a hot mess. Like there's just a bunch of stuff on it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's actually called the hot mess burger. I changed the name, obviously. Uh, it's by Rachel Ray. Oh my gosh. So you know it's gotta be, I don't know, average. A good looking burger? No. Average, probably. Um, <laughs> so I will put that up in the show notes. If this messy burger sounds good to you. I was thinking it could be like a Sloppy Joe burger. Mm, yeah, Cause... I did think about that for a little while. But then I thought, eh, would that count? Would Jason say that's not a burger? Would you have discounted it? I don't know. It could be a combo of a burger with Sloppy Joe stuff on it. Oh, uh, okay. So like a double whammy. Hmm. Well, I already committed to this, so. Yeah. All right. So my second burger is Open Face Your Bullies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it took me a moment to like figure out where you were punning there. Yeah. Open Face Your Bullies. Yeah. So, it's an open face burger. So, it just doesn't have a top bun. Sure, why not? (laughs) This is Bob running out of materials. Okay, materials. I mean ingredients. This is Bob running out of ingredients and trying to think of something (laughs) that he can The bun delivery guy is late. What do we do? Yeah, we don't have any tops on our buns. So, we don't have any tops on our buns. So, (laughs) we need to do open face burgers. Yeah, I was thinking it would be more like a melt. Uh, okay. I'm like a almost like, like a, a sub bun, melt? like a sub bun. Oh. So a little bit longer, and instead of having the typical round patty that you would for a burger, mm. you make it kind of long and thin. Because hmm. Bob makes his own burgers, so why not change the shape? Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, 
You could do that. Yeah. It's not my best burger. No. I mean, I love you, but no. (laughs) I did like your first one, though. It still makes me think of Super Mario, so it's pretty great. So who wins this week, Jason? You don't have any more? No, that's it. I only had two. Are we uh, going to have to do rock, paper, scissors? Sure, we could do rock, paper, scissors. Okay, you have to pick the burger of mine that you like best. I have very clearly stated one. which one. Oh, okay. You yeah. don't like my any mess burger? No. Oh, Not but it's as written much. like N E and then mess. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what does the N E <laughs> stand for? Nintendo Entertainment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's face off, Jason. Yeah. Are you ready? Sure. Enthusiasm. An all time <laughs> high over here. All time high, guys. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's you today. All time high. No I'm kidding. That sounds like Bob. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, that was a tie. Yep, yeah, both Double scissors. Double scissors. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is a, actually a dog, and it <laughs> chases the ball and eats it. I have a rock. And my rock's about to... Hey, it still needs to smash your scissors. It does not. It does to Put that dog scissor thing back up here. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Yeah. Animal abuse. (laughs) It's got dark. Okay, so my... My burger, which I'm excited about because... I was very excited when I came up with the name... The four, four crawler eight bit. bit. I think it's cute. Okay, that's our burger. That's, All right, that's the burger. That's for our speed. winner, and that's our episode. Hmm. Well, we could sum up overall. Fan of the episode. Yeah, I like this one. It's fun. It's not an all time favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I do get this one confused all the time with an episode from season one. Just name wise, I guess I got mm-hmm. them confused. It's cute. It's fun. I'm not overly attached to it, so there's not, it's kind of in the middle. For me, there's not really too many memorable lines. I do like Louise saying, he had sex, then we happen, deal with it. There are a few good lines in this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a miss for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. What makes it a miss? It doesn't feel, like it feels too blown out. It feels like everything went too far. Okay. Everything escalated way too quickly and way too over the top. Okay. And I know it's a cartoon Mm. and they're totally allowed to, but Bob's is usually fairly grounded in reality and it just seemed a little extreme. Okay. Yeah, that's really fair. I think that's what keeps me from putting this episode higher on my personal list. I know it's not a kid centric episode, Mm -hmm. so that also makes me not like it as much because i love the kids okay you I prefer love, i like it when the kids have more to do with the family okay so if louise and jane and tina are doing stuff with dad and mom then it makes me happy okay yeah it's very fair okay all right so that brings us to the end of burger of the week a multiverse radio production thank you so much for listening if you like our show please leave a rating and a review on itunes And we will come up with a really silly burger name for you. Yeah. Um, So hopefully you have a funny username. Yes. Yeah. Please leave some sort of username where we could uh, either figure something out from that. Or just use your name. Or yeah, just use your name and then we'll try to do like alliteration or something. If you have any comments or a punny burger name that you want to share, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio. Or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And as always, you can visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. And we will see you next week for our review of Season 2, Episode 5, Food Truckin'. Oh, Food Truckin'. Love Food Truckin'. I'm excited for this episode. Hey, Jennifer Slopez, get out of the road! Spoilers. (laughs) Spoilers for, like, my favorite line that episode. Okay, see you guys next week. All right, bye. Bye.